as Mamta Ma'am introduced, uh, I work as a technology architect with Nagaro and uh, I work uh, as a co-founder with Decentrum. So both are my passions. Um, so, so I am a TOGAF certified uh, architect and uh, in terms of technology, it means it's a lot of process driven framework that we use uh, in terms of designing applications. So about 15 years of experience with IT and uh, three plus years on blockchain. Uh, so currently I work for banking sector within Nagaro and then we also have a center of excellence um, with which uh, we uh, do some stuff, right? And we organize several meetups and then we did some workshops and IOTA, Ethereum, Hyperledger are the platforms that we worked on. And like ma'am said, I have hobby as uh, farming, so it's an interest area for me. And teaching and gadgets are also an interest area for me. On this side, you can see the logos that I worked with in the past. Um, but without further ado, um, just one quick thing. I was also asked in terms of uh, what is it that we can do in terms of hands-on. So maybe uh, if any one of you are interested, these are the tools that you can install, but they are going to take a lot of time to, uh, I mean, to install. So. Uh, you can do it offline. So I'll just show you uh, various options and various tools that we have. Uh, so have any one of you heard about uh, Ganache? Remix. Um, so you can use the options here, like, uh, so you have this raise hand option, right? So you can use this raise hand option to convey whether um, where you heard about Ganesh or not, because not everybody can speak in such a large audience. So I'll I'll look up for um, how many people are responding. So have you have you done any hands-on per se? So let me also move the slider. So you can go to the same link that was posted earlier uh, respond to uh, the one here so have you written a smart contract regardless of the blockchain platform whether uh, you know uh, hyperledger ethereum iota different languages and different platforms call it with different names these contracts so i just posted the link again um, if you haven't got the link so have you written a smart contract is the is the question i think for so far it's five people who responded okay um so let me also put timer the voting closes in the next one minute um so maybe if anyone um can summarize what you have learned so far uh can anyone summarize what, what is it that you have learned over the last few days? Uh, like, I'm just trying to baseline what kind of understanding do I need to build here? Anita, madam, you please. Anita, madam, are you there? That's okay, sir. Let me move on to the uh, <clears throat> move on to the next slide. Uh, so this will help build some context with the audience as to. So anyway, uh, how many of you did the hands-on exercise? That that's the poll that you are currently looking at. Maybe you can respond. It closes in the next few minutes. But are you familiar with like Node.js, Java, JavaScript, Go, any of these languages like to write smart contracts? I think no, sir. Okay. Uh, then, uh, what is the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain? Can someone try answering? You can unmute yourself if you would like to, uh, and then we can go from there. Anyone wants to unmute? Yeah. Mr. Dr. Jagdish, do you want to go? Uh, I mean, blockchain versus Bitcoin, what's the difference?
okay i believe uh, no i'm i'm so as you can see i'm trying to make it as participatory and engaged as much as possible but also we have like 1 hour 15 minutes of time between which i'm supposed to do justice to the session as well as also give you something to to carry back right so <clears throat> sir sir mm -hmm. yes shall i <clears throat> yes please take this actually bitcoin is a, a kind of cryptocurrency hmm form where okay blockchain is a distributed database okay a form of distributed database so bitcoin is powered by the blockchain mm hmm uh so can you can you compare like an analogy like what is database to a website what what is database to a website database actually it is a form of uh, storage right what blockchain is to bitcoin is more like bitcoin if you say it's a it's a website where you are where you are selling some uh, e-commerce bit on the internet or let's say you are selling some produce uh, from a farm so you have a website right so from that website you basically tell to the rest of the world that yeah uh, i'm selling something but how many types of rice are there how much quantity is there what are the options you know all of those kind of things usually we store on the database so if website is an application database is the technology so if bitcoin is an application blockchain is the technology uh, to use it right um so as we go along we'll try to analyze more as to what is it um, that we are trying to do uh, with bitcoin versus blockchain because most times i i also heard rukma ma'am yesterday she was also saying that uh, blockchain and bitcoin are not the same i think someone was asking the question as to uh, what is happening in terms of indian context and all of, all of that so so yeah blockchain is is to bitcoin as a database is to a website so as simple as as that but yeah once you get into deeper there are differences between what is a database versus what is uh, what is blockchain right so i think someone answered there are distributed ledger basics on distributed ledger right so uh, what is a genesis block have you uh, do you have awareness of what is a genesis block so while i do this let me also bring the Mer sir hmm. Mer merkle tree okay um, what's merkle tree what's uh, what is a hash what is a genesis block can someone try to answer these questions please good morning sir mm -hmm. i'm anita <clears throat> yes anita ma'am Uh, as far as I know, Genesis block is the starting block where Satoshi Nakamoto created, and uh, it contains only the transactions what he have done. This is the mm. basic first block. That's what I know. Mm. Uh, and coming to the Merkle tree, uh, mm. block stores n number of transactions where each and every transaction have the hash value. Mm. So. all these hashes of that particular block will be summarized forming a binary tree and together will give a single root which hmm. is the hash value that represents this n number of transactions which are there in that particular block okay okay thank you anita ma'am um, just one one thing um, uh, to correct there satoshi nakamoto originally conceived what's called as bitcoin um and wrote a bitcoin white paper so it's very interesting you can you can yeah. see uh yes you can, you can see that uh white paper if you just type bitcoin white paper you would get that but yes uh, he was not the one who coined the word blockchain um uh, yes what rest of the world did um uh, is rest of the world looked at okay what is bitcoin doing what's underlying bitcoin and then thought okay this is uh, this is something we can call as blockchain let's yes. extract this concept out and enable more and more applications and that's how bitcoin came into picture that's how ethereum came into picture that's how today uh, like rukma ma'am was saying yesterday there are about 4000 uh, virtual currencies today that yeah. exist in the world uh, right so each each blockchain has uh, has an origin block like let's say 
humanity uh, i mean whether you believe in bible and all of these things that's a separate thing but adam and eve right so they are the original people uh, on earth uh, to be believed right so sim- something similar genesis is where it starts right so genesis is the first block and if you notice what i'm sharing on the screen so i'm just trying trying to share you uh, one example so again uh, just what this session is it's not going to be completely basics of blockchain i'm just trying to refresh and also trying to make sure that uh, we are able to relate to what we speak when you heard from different different people different different faculty members as to what is blockchain what is smart contract and all of this stuff right so um this is as simple as this uh, now block number 1 is called genesis block and you see this mine button uh so did any of you use this demo before uh just say yes or no yes sir okay this demo was used in the context of this fdp ma'am or you personally know about this i personally went through it sir okay so there is this guy called anders brown with uh, team thanks anita ma'am so she went through this but i believe you may not have gone through uh, this link so i uh, let me just post it here right so on the thanks usha ma'am block 0 is called genesis block uh, okay so once i click mine it became green right so and also you can see the first four digits are uh, zeros um whereas block number 2 first dig- first four digits are not zeros so this is a hashing algorithm which does like a 256 bit uh, hash entry uh and basically whatever you write here it changes right so it is green so far so let's say i add 11 right so it automatically became red and also hash you can see that the first uh, digits are not zeros so now i click mine so what it did it variated this nonce value and uh, it gave you a sign hash right so similarly uh, so this is your first block your second block uh, depends on your first block and you can see that first block has previous values as zeros whereas second block has previous value as whatever is this hash value that you see here okay you can play with with, with this website more um, offline um so this is a distributed blockchain where three different people or peers or nodes have the same copy of the chain right for example if i if i did blockchain here and then number 1 here and number number 2 here right so once we mine it and it is shared with all the peers that are there that's when it's called a distributed ledger right so and then tokens come into picture and you know then uh, coinbase is one of the uh, online transaction market where people give fiat money so what is fiat uh, dear teachers duplicate sir uh, fiat uh, fiat currency i mean i mean duplicate or fake like uh, so fiat is traditionally used for conventional currencies like rupee is a fiat currency dollar is a fiat currency uh, bitcoin is a virtual currency ethereum is a virtual currency so uh, do you know where all these currencies are listed like where can you see all these 4000 currencies what their values are um, do you know where you can look that up so let me just show you um, so there is this website i mean there are several websites but one of the popular ones is called as coin market cap right so here you can see what is the current what is the price of bitcoin what is its market capitalization what is uh, what is its last 7 days what is the circulating supply okay so as you can see there are hundreds of currencies here and 4000 was an old number i guess um so now it shows about 8461 every day someone is launching a cryptocurrencies but what we need to be careful about is um cryptocurrencies are not blockchain um these are 
more like uh, an application of blockchain so each of them have their own ways of differentiating themselves so uh, so that's what uh, the distributed nature of blockchain is okay signing as you could see the first four digits once they become one I mean once you see the first four digits are zeros then it is called signing but what happens is uh, these so called uh, people who basically help uh, maintain the security of blockchain and the community that maintains the security of blockchain for example take ethereum or take bitcoin what happens is every moment there are some blocks that are going to get mined and they keep getting added to the main chain right so when they are when they are getting added someone needs to make sure that the application is uh, I mean the chain is secure right and let's say uh, I mean you saw in the in this demo that it took a few seconds to mine mine this action right um, so there is something called as difficulty um, of uh, generating a block so what happens is once you click on this this mine so behind the scenes what happens is a nonce value is to be calculated for this entire text that you see here including the transactions including the previous everything so all of them combined together result in this hash so in a way you can put the entire constitution of india into into this block and just so this a b c d let's say this is constitution of india once you click on mine so it you you always get this fixed length character as a as a hash so each of these blockchain has their ways ways to sign this hash so some say first four digits should be zero some say first six digits should be zero so on so forth right so and when we attempt to change anything here so let's say i decided first letter should be capital a so automatically it became unsigned and when we have it distributed across so many people right so it's not that we cannot change right so what is immutable nature of blockchain blockchain says data is immutable on blockchain meaning nobody can change so it's not that nobody can change it is it is that even if you change to distribute across the hundreds of thousands of peers that are this across the world let's say a record says that uh, rishi is a nasa engineer right i i said rishi is a nasa engineer which is not true right uh, <clears throat> and then i i come back and change this to rishi works as a architect in nagaro uh, and then someone comes in the second block and says no rishi is a engineer who works at nasa right so the moment somebody changes this everyone in terms of this distributed network needs to agree so that's what is the immutable nature but to be able to make everyone agree is not that easy hundreds of thousands of mining that happen and every time somebody mines do you know what happens like what comes back if it is a virtual currency it's called a reward right somebody mines and submits to the network that yeah i mined this data uh, then as a reward you get back some uh, cryptocurrency uh, if it is a cryptocurrency based application right but let me also disperse a myth there is uh, is everything related to blockchain related to cryptocurrency no not necessarily let's say we are working with uh, vaccine based uh, healthcare application right so we all know the importance of vaccine after covid so now let's say vaccine one uh, stayed at temperature what I mean what's the ideal temperature of uh, vaccine anybody good guess you can type in the chat also i already wrote the answer and let's say each of these vaccines need to stay within 2 to 6 degrees range of temperature now let's say there is a vaccine that stayed at you know 10 degrees okay for for like an hour or so right 
then vaccine guidelines will say something about that if the vaccine exceeded the temperature limits at uh, for it uh, for so much duration like 20 degree right so for example these are the, the these are the records that we are storing now are these uh, financial transactions no these are not financial transactions these are like what are the temperatures of various vaccines that are recorded so this can be if you imagine a factory this can be a uh, input stock that is received let's say a bread manufacturer right so we uh, it's a daily life example uh, so if you need to manufacture bread you need to get some flour uh, right um, you need to get some sugar you need to get some milk solids you need to get x y z right so all of them together um, you get so that's when uh you you want to store it on blockchain let's say so that nobody can forge it by forging i mean to say nobody can mutate it right so then your data um can can change right so but let's say you built a blockchain based application with a worldwide network of bakeries right and then uh, you know it uh, like for example mcdonald does this uh, right so what is the input stock what's the output stock who carried it uh, who dropped it at what point at what time so everything so all of that is data so once it becomes data and once you want to make sure that it cannot change without proper protocol and guideline then you can put it on blockchain right so let me take you back into the um, into this old world uh, so that that's what is a genesis block that's what is a hash uh, why it is called as a blockchain i don't think we have answered it so uh why is it called a blockchain probably simple answer so there are five blocks here right so each of them are interlinked from uh, with one to another so 5 four, three, two, one. one So sorry guys, uh, someone was here at the door. Um, so yeah, so like this, you have a lot of data and all of this data uh, comes together and uh, you know, it becomes your distributed uh, chain. So, uh, so anyway, so that's what is your blockchain. What is consensus? Guys, what what is consensus? Uh, any answers? Okay, <laughs> fine. So what is consensus is, um, so you have these blocks, right? So let's say something changes. So once it changes, uh, once these, uh, uh, once these blockchain changes, right? So this blockchain, um, now let's say all of them have same values here. Let's say I have, um, vaccine one to four
right so all of these are uh, you know getting mined now let's say each of them um, now let's say one of these came and said i was at 9 degrees right whereas others say um, you were at 10 degrees so what happens is over a period of time all of this distributed network right so they all need to come to some kind of an agreement like who came first uh, like who submitted uh, who solved the uh, blockchain first and all of these kind of things right so right so in this way let's say all of this mining happened and one of them wants to change the data right one of them wants to say vaccine number 3 is at 9 degrees instead of 10 degrees that everybody else is agreeing to right so then whom should we consider the official record the official record comes as 10 degrees right now let's say there is a room full of people there are let's say 10 people nine of them say this is uh, this temperature stayed at 10 degrees and one person came and said this temperature stayed at uh, you know 9 degrees so whom should we treat as the uh, record right so in this case if nine people are saying i mean uh, you know nine people nine people can collude and uh, come back and say uh, uh, that this is uh, this is 10 degrees it's also possible but most times out of blockchain what happens is there are there are this non fungible nature of blockchain which makes sure that these uh, this doesn't happen not everybody can come here and just fetch the data and and go right so consensus make sure that each and every decision that is taken on blockchain is agreed upon by all the network okay so that is why um, it's called as consensus everybody comes together about this what is an oracle um any idea team so this time i'll wait for you to respond what what is oracle if you don't know that's fine uh, you can say we don't know but uh, if somebody knows i'm hoping to hear from them anyone can help answer उट vaccine stays at different different temperatures right now let's say um, i gave this job of recording the vaccine temperature to a person right what happens is every half an hour that person comes checks the reading and says okay vaccine 1 is at 2 degree vaccine 2 is at 5 degree 3 is at 9 4 is at 20 whatever right so this person comes and inputs now let's say this is happening with a vaccine manufacturer where the, uh, where they assign someone to check the temperature and the uh, policy of accepting the vaccine load says that okay okay you know uh, if any vaccine exceeds more than 10 degrees temperature for more than an hour then that vaccine should not be treated as uh, as bought right so manufacturer or whoever is managing that logistics should not ask money for that vaccine right then what will happen uh, this guy uh, whoever uh, is maintaining the temperature record will be approached by someone and said bhaiya uh, we need to uh, you know change the temperature so i'll give you like 500 rupees just make this vaccine batch instead of 12 degrees to make it like 2 degrees which is the acceptable 
range right so that's what is collusion i mean in other words it's also called as cor- corruption but in blockchain world it's called collusion right but how do we make sure that this doesn't happen that this kind of tampering doesn't happen so this kind of tampering doesn't happen when this record comes from an automatic sensor based reading right that's when you know uh, we can make sure that there is no collusion that is taking place right so that's why uh, you need some real world device or some kind of real world input telling you that see this is what is happening in real world because blockchain as such is blind right i also wrote a blog about it i'll just show one slide related uh, to that but what oracle is is oracle gives you the real world reading like what is unlock to digital conversion in terms of a sensor we all know that right i i believe most of you know unlock to digital conversion using sensors and so on and so forth um so um, so that that's what happens here now um now what's oracle is that on blockchain right so now let's say all of these things are uh, are there right so this is just a checkpoint slide uh, to base slide so i know we are at 10 10 so we have like 40 50 minutes uh, i mean to, to talk about and get through the answers to your questions as well so uh, let's also look at why do you need something like a blockchain um, or distributed ledgers right so um, there are some questions that Uh, are listed here which say you know is the person about 21 years of age is this something that you encounter from time to time when you go for voting okay or when somebody wants to go buy alcohol or when somebody wants to buy some medicine that is you know uh, that's known to be sensitive in nature so in all these cases age verification is done right but what happens during age verification typically uh, in in most of uh, most cases is you are asked to produce a date of birth you know uh, record like your driving license aadhar card you know there are some acceptable ids that are uh, that are uh, that are okay to prove your age most times a copy of this is taken right all that somebody wants to verify is what is the person's age <clears throat> so if what they want to know is person's age then why do they need an entire record of your identity right so only limited portion of your identity is is supposed to be uh, um, shown to them whether what is what's your age they don't really need to know what what's your address what's your full name what's your father's name they just wants to know whether you are about 21 years of age or not so this kind of uh, proving something is called as zero knowledge proof um, you can look it up on um, on the on the internet right so we already talked about did my vaccine stay in the temperature range um, how can i execute a stock trade in a few minutes does a land belong uh, to a person so how do you uh, how do you make sure that whether something that is done is uh, is is true uh, is correct or not so in this way a uh, blockchain can help you record all of these things um, you know provide solutions to uh, a lot of these uh, aspects right so so with that said um, let me just show you a, a few aspects uh, which are uh, which i believe are essential in terms of someone like like you people will go back to your students and start teaching about blockchain right so uh one of the essential things that we all need to keep in mind is um is probably 90s were talking about uh internet era you know pre internet era and then telephone all of these things happen so all of these are in a way a way to communicate a way to communicate data a way to communicate decision you know lot of things happen right so peer to peer you understood that distributed uh, nature of the application so this single slide uh, could be talked about for like half an hour i mean if if you know we have full day but i think you get the gist right so we moved from a pre internet era uh, where nothing 
was available as data on the internet it moved uh, from pre internet to internet and then to peer to peer systems and then to blockchain and then uh, you know from blockchain to iot ai and ml so that's that's the future so where uh, blockchain plus iot ai ml so why do you say iot ai ml because we talked just now about oracle right so if you know if you want to have a real world sensor telling to blockchain what the temperature is at certain point right so that that itself is an example of an internet of things which is telling data which is communicating data from that point to that point right um so a similar slide you can see here right initially internet was built and uh, it's just wires and network nobody really knew how to apply uh, all of this network what to do but defense purposes have given way for blockchain to be built on the internet right then uh, from there there is web 1.0 so where you know all the organizations which have a website came and said see here is what uh, we are selling he i mean let's say mac let's say microsoft all of them have put information on the internet about we have a website okay come and visit our site you can know more about us um, that's what is web 1.0 okay the so web 2.0 is where applications like email came into picture social networks came into picture you know twitter paypal a lot of things came into picture so it's a little bit more interactive um than 1.0 where you were only reading web 3.0 is more about reading writing and verifying uh, verifying the trust okay so so web 3.0 has given way to lot more applications that are uh, that are possible to help verify uh, the data so One second, guys. so that's what uh, has given way to web 3.0 guys uh, so that's what is centralized decentralized uh, distributed um, you can see that in all these cases internet um, it was mostly centralized then you know uh, torrents came you know blockchain came and all of them are uh, getting distributed um, so that that's what is a distributed uh, nature of the application so let me just show you a few uh, slides as well okay so why do we call blockchain is uh, blockchain is blind blockchain is called blind because once you receive data and that data is given uh, that data is being fed into uh, into internet right so there is a lot of data ownership uh, today if you see google they are sitting on a lot of a uh, lot of data so whoever has data that's the new oil right but if something says on the internet right for example eating rice is bad let's say somebody puts it on the internet does it become true because just just because eating rice is bad is written by some other in some country it's not necessarily but let's say when you look at google uh, ask me look at, when you look at google asking for um is eating rice healthy then the first answer that pops up is uh, you know eating right is uh, rice is bad okay maybe the author has written it from the context that eating rice is bad when you have diabetes right or do not eat polished rice eat uh, only unpolished rice right so any of these things um, that happen uh, you know this is where uh, data becomes uh, data becomes the new oil right so what is fact what is not a fact and all of this distributed ledgers are also prone to similar kind of uh, kind of mistakes right so uh, 
now how here comes the types of uh, distributed ledgers um, so do you know the types of distributed ledgers what are they uh, i mean which ones fall into which category uh, any any idea okay so um, these distributed ledgers regarding of whether they are cryptocurrency they are not i mean most famously you will see cryptocurrency but then you also see solutions that are built on what's known as hyperledger fabric i think there was a session that happened yesterday and day before about hyperledger fabric uh, right so it is one of the permissioned uh, private network okay and then you have uh, jp morgan which is uh, there is a quorum network so that is also permission and private right and then you have public and permission ledgers like ripple but what is a permission um, so permission is somebody allows you onto the chains uh, uh, that uh, you need to i mean if you need to join you need to ask someone right what does it mean by public and permissionless so public and permissionless is where uh, you know you are uh, uh, i mean you need not ask anybody to join a network you, even if you want to join there is a set of protocol guidance that download this software register here and then you join right and for the most part public and permissionless is uh, what what you can call as unauthenticated uh, you know uh, anonymous networks like you don't need to reveal your identity uh, to be there on a public and permissionless network okay today if uh, india is looking at uh, censoring or you know banning cryptocurrencies one reason for that is this is anonymous and the biggest fear of of indian government and also most governments across the world is what if all the wealthy uh, share uh, their uh, uh, their wealth on these cryptocurrencies whereas they are not able to I mean any government is not able to trace how much fund is available with that uh, person or an organization right so that will lead to more black money kind of things so that's where your uh, public and uh, you know private and permission uh, come into picture right so uh, so then uh, any questions so far let me see if you, any of you have raised uh, your hand any any questions so far Oh, sorry. I was speaking on mute. Um, team, um, does anybody have a have a question now? I'm just going to give uh, like a one or two minute break. You can you can answer saying I'm going too fast, too slow, or telling things that you already know. I see. Uh, Ravindra Bharti coming to private blockchain. How people can get approval in order to participate? good question um, so let's take example of uh, hyperledger right so what happens on hyperledger is there are these things called orderer and certificate certificate authority 
who basically uh, you know uh, allow people to participate on the network so if there is a peer that is supposed to be added right uh, let me just show you something right meanwhile quickly one second so remember uh, team this is your session um, whatever best you want to make out of it you could make it need not be necessary that you go with my um, session slides itself okay so uh, did anybody install the hyperledger fabric network like you can maybe uh, raise your hand so that we could see like did any of you get a chance to install hyperledger fabric um if you install hyperledger fabric successfully <coughs> i'm sorry if you install hyperledger fabric successfully um you know there are some prerequisites right you need to install git you need to install curl you need to install docker regardless of what operating system you are on you can be on mac os uh, linux or windows there are different options that you can set right and once you install hyperledger fabric you can see that there are some configuration tools and you know there are some fabric i mean fabric clients and fabric servers there are some orders peers and and all of these things okay uh, again i'm not repeating all of these things primarily because there are other faculties uh, who have shared this knowledge with you all i'm trying to do is put it to uh, i mean probably one manifestation as to how to share uh, this data right so coming to your question ravindra varthi uh, so this is where your order and all of these come into come into picture so they allow uh, the people um, one second sorry so yeah they allow the people uh, who are on the network to participate you know to uh, to give permission to them different types of permission can be given by different organizations now very simple thing once you install hyperledger fabric you know you can go into this test network folder let me try increasing the font size okay you can go into the test network folder and you should be able to say dot slash network dot sh uh, up okay before you type this command your docker needs to be turned on sir please increase the screen so the visibility is less mm, is it better now sir yeah yeah right so okay so so once you do this i mean your docker should be up but basically once docker is up um this will start uh, coming up so if you have uh, you know installed your hyperledger successfully um, then you'll see there is a fabric pair you know there is a fabric order you know all of these things that got started so they are the ones that basically help you um, to make sure that so they are the ones that that help you make sure that uh, that only respective people participate in the network in terms of the private blockchains right now let me move on to so i hope that answers your question ravindra bharti okay so um, all of these components come together to make sure they allow only required and permission peers to come up on the network okay so uh, 
let's move on to the next games um so one of the questions that i asked you about was related to if you are not able to see this uh, font properly maybe you can uh, you know use control and mouse scroll up you should be able to increase the size of uh, what you are seeing here right so one second right so uh, there are different types of consensus algorithms so right now the most popular one used by everybody is called proof of work and in this what happens is uh, to to be able to create a block so think of it like solving a puzzle and this block is created uh, by broadcasting uh, you know uh, that somebody solved a puzzle this information is broadcasted to a network of people right so but the problem or the disadvantage is if they I mean 100 i'm just taking an example number but it will be a lot more than that in real world hundreds and thousands of computers will compete to create a block and say that we are the first ones to solve this block meaning we are the first ones to calculate what is the nonce value correctly in in terms of simple terms right so all of these 100 people will compete and say see i am the first one to create the block so uh, when you are when you are when we are creating this block um, so proof of, i mean whenever there is proof of work uh, all these people will compete simultaneously and what happens with that is there is tons of energy that is spent just on identifying what is the answer to the problem and hundreds of people or hundreds of computers will compete at the same time to do this and only one of them is rewarded and what happens is rest of the 99 just for example i'm saying it's way more than 99 if it is 100 people who competed only one is given the reward rest of the 99 don't get the reward at all that's the problem with the proof of work uh, consensus algorithm it is a lot more energy intensive but so far it is the safest algorithm that is that can be used on blockchain that's why people are using proof of work okay another algorithm that is coming into picture uh, these days uh, i mean ethereum has been working on it from quite some time and you can see polka dot you know cosmos a lot of these other uh, blockchain based uh, frameworks and platforms are trying to solve is what is called as proof of stake so proof of stake tells that if there are three people, right? If there are three people uh, that have different, different, uh, you know, stakes, okay? So by stake, I mean to say one of them has 100 ethers and one of them has 10 ethers and one of them has 25 ethers, okay? Based on what proof of stake algorithm is used internally, one of them can be given more weight one of them can be given less weight another can be given even lesser weight but just because someone has 100 ethers doesn't mean they can do anything wrong and right on the on the system so if they deviated from their original uh, commitment that they'll always stay true and they won't tamper with the network and evidence is found that the uh, tampering is done then their 100 ethers are lost okay that's why they are putting that at stake they are putting their reputation also at stake and once they you know do something wrong their stake is lost okay so uh, <clears throat> so like this proof of work proof of stake are uh, two popular consensus algorithms but proof of elapsed time you know proof of ownership you know proof of uh, i mean a lot of other uh, consensus algorithms are there just type google and say consensus algorithms various types you'll see lots and lots of algorithms each blockchain is coming up with their own way um, you know to uh, to do this consensus now uh, now i also mentioned about how do we design applications for uh, for blockchain right um, so how many of you think that okay let me just put up a poll because anyway nobody is talking so let me just put it up on on sim uh, on the mentimeter website maybe you can respond um, just one second
Okay, meanwhile, you can ask any questions that you may have um, about whatever uh, you want to do. Any any questions from previous sessions also? If you have any question, you can ask that. So let me just an, uh, post another um, session. Okay, so maybe you can go to uh, the same link that you had earlier and uh, let me repost it again here. Can you hear me? Um, so I just posted the link again. So maybe you can. Um, I see Rekha had her hand up. Yes, ma'am. So the, the polls are anonymous, so we won't really get to know the names of the people who are responding. So you can feel free without hesitation that, oh, I'm, I'm wrong. Um, so someone might think of me another way. So you need not think of it. So far, just two responses. But maybe you can say whether blockchain can be part of every solution or not. Okay, so poll closes in the next one minute. Hello, hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you, ma'am. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah. Sir, I had a doubt. Like, sir, one of the potential advantages of blockchain is non reputation right, sir? Mm -hmm. uh, that means whoever want to make a transaction, they need to uh, digitally sign in before they come to any transaction. Uh, but when it comes to permissionless transaction, you mentioned that we can get anonymity, but mm. with something reflecting like it's a contradictory statement. Uh, can you give uh, your uh, insights on this, sir? So what do you understand by non-repudiation, ma'am? Uh, I mean, anybody uh, who wants to make a transaction, they definitely need to give uh, digital sign. So okay. that definitely... Uh, their user identity will be recorded now, sir. Then how we can get anonymity here? So uh, I think it's a good question, but uh, you need to look at it this way. 
when you when you are saying non repudiation or or to sign on on something it's not, it, i mean whether, whether you are signing it as an anonymous note or whether you are signing it as an identity depends on which blockchain you are part of like for example your hyperledger framework it says that uh, you know um, someone who wants to post a transaction on the network needs to sign it with this digital signing right that does not mean that permissionless blockchains uh, they do not have any protocol so even permissionless blockchains they have protocols and when somebody is posting a transaction on the network they still use cryptography you know public private key you know all of these things but that are part of the protocol itself so just by being permissionless it does not mean that there is no protocol there just that on a permissionless network you only know the hash address of someone on a permission network along with the hash address you would know who that person is meaning they are not anonymous on a private network but on a public network they are anonymous but still both of them have similar cryptography that's being used to make sure transactions are secure does that answer your question ma'am yes sir how we are getting this anonymity sir How that's where getting... I'm. Uh, that's where I'm getting the confusion with the uh, permission and permissionless transaction. Okay, so let's just look at Ether Scan. So, do you all know uh, what Ether Scan is? Have you seen this website before? Do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, we seen it. Okay, so this is uh, what's called as Ethereum's uh, blockchain uh, network. Okay. now here um, somebody who is a miner posted like 179 transactions in this block okay what do you see here there is a transaction hash okay let's just open it there is a transaction hash and it says from here to here okay so it costed this much gas um so i I mean, I'm basically assuming that you know about hash because I think second day talked about smart contracts, ether, and all of this stuff. So, but anyway, if you don't know, don't worry. Uh, but see, who is it from? To who is it? To. Okay. And uh, the value of ether that transferred is zero point zero zero nine. Right. Once you look at this address, what is it that they are doing? so they are doing uh, i mean about 2 minutes ago there is something that they mined and they got a reward of some kind that's what happened at this address okay this might be someone sitting in germany somebody sitting in india somebody sitting somewhere else they have all we can say about them is they have this hash address okay in case of a permissioned uh, node when you look up who this hash address belongs to you would know who that is okay in case of uh, permissionless blockchain like ethereum you would not know who this who is behind the address okay that's why this is anonymous on a permission network uh, it is not anonymous clear okay sir thank you sir the anonymity comes from traceability of that address but both of these addresses anonym anonymous or not anonymous Uh, both of those kinds they can i mean they follow similar kinds of cryptographic principles based on which blockchain you are on hyperledger follows this order certificate authority and all of these things ether follows uh, a different protocol so but both of them ensure security and privacy of the network okay so let me move back so that's what is about consensus okay so let me also show you this slide so while i show you this slide let me also show you what people responded on mentimeter um so three people said yes to blockchain can be part of every solution one of you said no and two of you said i'm sure okay doesn't matter who said these answers all i'm trying to say is 
uh, it's not necessary that blockchain is required to be part of every solution. For example, if somebody just wants to build a website and uh, wanted to list some items, they don't want traceability. They don't want any of these uh, secure, security, cryptographic features of blockchain. Then you do not, uh, then, you know, uh, you do not have to use blockchain, right? But if you do have to use blockchain, even then, uh, we should not call them like blockchain based applications. Okay. Today, I mean, I, I'll just tell you uh, something and maybe you'll laugh or not laugh. That's a, that's a different thing. Uh, let's say as part of a large IT application, which is uh, for managing the salaries of the employees, we are building one HR based application, right? Now I use Oracle as part of it, right? Uh, but I also have a mobile app for it, also have a uh, web application for this, and also have a rich desktop-based application for this. So this nomenclature is familiar to you, I'm assuming, right? So what is a mobile app, what is a desktop app, and what is a web app? You all know. You use mobiles day-to-day -day basis. So let's say this is what it is, and then there are uh, some services, right? Now today I come and say, See, I'm, uh, I mean, I have database as part of the application, right? So today I come and say, uh, see, I'm building an Oracle based application, right? But Oracle is just one part of the application. Oracle database is just one part of the application or SQL server. It's one part of the application. But how funny it would be when I say I'm building an SQL server based application. I'm building a, uh, you know, Oracle based application. I'm building a MySQL based application is it uh, i mean is it not funny to call it uh, based on the database okay the, so calling an application that it is a blockchain application when blockchain really is part of the data layer right uh, i mean that that's what essentially is blockchain is no magic bullet you know it it's not like super hi-fi technology that needs to be part of every application that we build and design so all it is part of is it's a shared ledger uh, i mean unlike a traditional database a blockchain based uh, distributed ledgers can be part of any uh, any web based uh, application any mobile application any modern applications that you see today and most re most recently you are seeing this term called as distributed applications so da dapps um, so to say Right, so they are also uh, there. So, so the web UI, mobile, desktop, and all of these things, uh, these are uh, front-end, middleware, and database layer-based applications. So uh, that that's what they are, you know. Uh, so when when you look at modern distributed uh, applications, let me just show you one slide. But before we move on. Let me know if there are any questions on this slide. This is the sample of sample UI, you know, talking about how the user interface layer is talking to the middle layer where there are some services. You probably have heard about front end to back end, you know, front ends for back ends, FBB, you know, back end services, microservices, web services, uh, a lot of these things, right? So all of them, and then the database layer uh, of the application, right? So this is one sample architecture. So backend services, they decide whether to talk to the traditional database or whether they talk to the uh, distributed ledger of the application, right? So there are some additional slides that I have uh, kept just for reference, but depending on what kind of discussions that we get into, we can uh, you know use them. So if you have any questions on the um, you know, sample architecture, maybe you can talk about them. Otherwise, uh, let's talk about distributed apps and maybe close from there. Uh, we are at about 10.47 now, just like 10 to 12 minutes to go. Um, any questions, meanwhile, please uh, feel free to ask. Okay, so let's move on unless there are any questions. Um, 
in terms of a blockchain technology stack right so this is a slide uh, that uh, that's borrowed from 101 blockchains uh, but what it is talking about here is there is an application layer where you have all your uh, distributed application browsers your distributed applications you know application hosting and all of that you know then you have your uh, multi signatures these oracles wallets and all of these these are your optional components then you have your protocol layer which talks about consensus algorithm side chains permission permissionless uh, uh, distributed ledgers and then ethereum virtual machines so on and so forth then you have a uh, network layer which basically takes care of peer to peer or blockchain network layer and all of that and then you have infrastructure layer where mining virtualization tokens and all of these things are there so this is your typical tech stack and combine it with this view of sam of a sample architecture you know that whatever you have here you know all of uh, this ui ux and middleware and database layer comes into picture and then this distributed uh, dlt layer also comes into picture and a shared ledger right um, so this is where uh, this is where and this is how uh, things are coming into play and you can basically uh, imagine what kind of possibilities are there so we need not look at blockchain as something that is <laughs> radically going to change our web based applications or mobile based applications or a desktop based applications all this is going to change is uh, how the application processes data okay um, so that's what uh, is this sample application architecture so i have few more things to show i mean there is there are lots and lots of things to show um, fortunately there is another session on uh, on saturday to wrap up and close where we can discuss about few case studies and you know uh, how to uh, how to think about blockchain based application when to use blockchain when not to use blockchain we can all uh, take a look at the application at that point of time okay um, <clears throat> so let me also uh, you you have any questions you can still go to the same link that we have from earlier uh, you can start posting them or you can post them here also but maybe it's easier uh, <coughs> if you go to this menti.com and start posting your questions i just posted the the link again um i just posted this link again i i mean i'll just take a, a quick one minute break to get some water um, i'll be right back meanwhile you can start posting all right guys all right team i'm back um okay um 
So I couldn't get the name, but please suggest some good projects on blockchain for students to work along with required tools. Uh, thank you. So maybe uh, one tool that you that you can look at, you know, uh, just for learning purpose, right? So I'm just showing it. So it's called Ganache. So this is like a local uh, blockchain server, you can say. And you have these mnemonics um, that you can, uh, I mean, these are 12 words, cryptography that are used here. So they can, uh, I mean, where you can store your uh, addresses and so on and so forth. Okay. So all of these are your uh, wallet addresses. Now, um, so this is one tool that you need to learn how to use, you know. So you can deploy your smart contacts. Um, this is, you know, there is there is this website called as Truffle. I'm just showing showing here, Truffle. So on this Truffle suit, suit you have a lot of these uh, applications that you can use. Some smart contacts can be built. So just you know, for us for a minute, your smart contracts. These are uh, um, these are like your application programs that you, that you can enable for blockchain based applications and these applications uh, <clears throat> these uh, these smart contract based applications are going to live on this blockchain world so for primarily ethereum truffle uh, helps you and uh, i think these days they have started supporting your uh, coda network as well um, your ganache you can download it from here there are uh, lots of other things that are there. So this is one website that is helpful. I'm just posting it in the chat. This is one tool that you can use. So Ganache definitely, you know, here is something that you can uh, that you can utilize. Okay. So uh, I mean, this is like a very short session. Usually, I mean, if we if it is hands on, it usually takes a uh, whole day to to do this blockchain kind of uh, sessions okay but one tool is ganache another tool is docker um, hyperledger uses it extensively you know these peer organizations all, all of them they are part of this uh, hyperledger network now one other tool that is uh, that's probably helpful uh, to write smart contacts is your remix so remix.ethereum.com. Uh, so it's a web-based IDE. Solidity is the language that's used here. So Solidity is nothing but it's like a JavaScript-based uh, language. Uh, so uh, you can write your smart contacts here. You know, you can test them, connect them to a compiler of uh, Solidity. You now let me also show you. Uh, one more thing. So, any of you heard about this browser called as uh, Brave? Uh, let me know once you can see. Uh, did you people hear about MetaMask, Remix, any of these things? Um, if not, okay, so this is MetaMask, right? So it's a browser plugin. It usually works with Chrome based uh, browsers. So you can, you know, buy or uh, sell, but you know, you don't really need to spend real money on it. So this is what is as Ethereum mainnet. 
so you can switch to rinkeby you can switch to kovan all of these are test networks okay so these test networks they kind of allow you um, to deposit some ether tokens right so for example dropstick so i have 6.3 ethers on dropstick test network i have uh, 1.23 ethers on rinkeby test network so you might ask like how do we get this um, so you can get them from faucet.rinkeby.com you can post your social network uh, some kind of a social like twitter or facebook so they need to uh, see that you are from a validated uh, network chain that's coming so you need to post your hash address of your wallet as a test transaction I mean test post there so you can copy that from here and all you need to do uh, so here it's not so you, need, you just need to go to your facebook and post and do a test post uh, by copying this address okay so we are at 11 o'clock let me see the other question that came uh, ramkrishna sir uh, any any more inputs can you suggest how to provide privacy to transactions in research as well there still some issues arising in that concern like type of algorithms or fields to be concentrated to provide more privacy mm, not sure what is your intent is uh, so what kind of concerns are you talking about are you talking about exchanges that are getting hacked or are you talking about bitcoin or ethereum kind of uh, protocols that have uh, that have loopholes in terms of security any of these things ethereum loopholes okay um can okay maybe this is a topic by itself um, to discuss not a short answer how to provide privacy to transactions a lot of a uh, lot of organizations these days are working on cross chain compatibility it's like look at polka dot you know look at cosmos so all of the all of these organizations what they're trying to do is let's say i have uh, an application designed for ethereum okay which has which is providing the funds now let's say i need to pay a smart contract that is residing on atom right so that's another chain so how do i connect these two right so those are like cross platform applications that are being built so it's called interoperability of blockchain so that's one thing this ethereum loopholes if you can uh, so i'm i'm just sharing my phone number also here um you can reach on whatsapp but expect some delays because i'm between projects and few other things uh, so <clears throat> you can reach out on whatsapp okay you can also join decentrum's uh, telegram group that's uh, one more area uh, i mean one more place where you can uh, participate with others of similar interest i'll post uh, the detail of that how to join the telegram detail soon um, so you can take it from there what other question any other questions team okay we are we are at 1103 so i did my best in terms of providing you the knowledge um, that's required in terms of tools to be knowing contacts that you can deploy uh, you can definitely play around um, with all of these aspects right so just go to remix and you can write your uh, first smart contact right so with that let me um, let me just thank all of you for participating here feel free to reach out and looking forward to see most of you on saturday